Hi, fourth graders. Welcome back to another day of our read-alouds. Today we're going to read two more chapters, and we're going to start with Unite or Die. By now, war seemed almost certain. You could practically smell the gunpowder in the air. The colonies knew very well that Britain could crush them one by one. But if they joined together, maybe they would have a chance. It was Unite or Die. The call went out. Delegates from all the colonies were invited to Philadelphia for the first Continental Congress. A delegate is somebody who's representing another group of people. So each colony is going to send somebody to represent their opinions and their voice to the first Continental Congress. Delegates from Massachusetts, including John Adams, excuse me, including John Adams, who would later become the second president of the United States, set off in a large coach drawn by four horses. As they passed through New Haven, Connecticut, Adams wrote, all the bells in town were set to ring, were set to ringing, and the people, men, women, and children, were crowding at the doors and the windows. On September 5th, 1774, 56 delegates met in Philadelphia. Only Georgia didn't send delegates. Georgia, the colony farthest from Massachusetts, was not yet ready to throw off British rule. Had the moment come to fight for independence? Many of the delegates were sure it had, but others still hoped for peace with Britain. The first Continental Congress was held in Carpenters Hall in Philadelphia. It was owned by the city's carpenters, who were proud to be the host of this historic meeting. Nonetheless, all of them were angry at the way Massachusetts had been treated. The Continental Congress voted to condemn the intoler intolerable acts and passed a Bill of Rights listing the freedoms that all Americans had the right to enjoy. And the Congress agreed on a new boycott of British goods. Remember, a boycott means that you're refusing to buy something because you're upset about who is selling it or who is making it. This boycott was called the Association. No British goods would be purchased or even used and no more slaves would be imported into the United States. How could the boycott be enforced? Committees of inspection would be set up in each colony. People caught violating the boycott would be visited by the Sons of Liberty and their pots of hot tar. Delegates who hoped for peace drew up a petition to King George, asking him to protect the rights of his American subjects. Maybe war with the mother country could still be avoided. So some people were hoping that the king would give Americans some rights, but that they could still be under his rule. But Patrick Henry spoke out boldly in favor of independence. The distinctions, he cried, between Virginians, Pennsylvanians, New Yorkers, and New Englanders are no more. I am not a Virginian, but an American. During the First Continental Congress, John Adams was often invited to elegant meals at the homes of important Philadelphians. He describes one feast, turtle, and every other thing, flummery, jellies, sweetmeats of 20 sorts, trifles, whipped, syllabus, floating islands, fools, etc., and the, de and the dessert of fruits, raisins, almonds, pears, peaches, wines, most excellent and admirable. Liberty or death. Patrick Henry was a delegate from Virginia and a friend of George Washington. He believed that Americans should fight for their independence. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? He asked in a famous speech, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Spies. What is a spy? Someone who secretly watches and gathers information about an enemy's actions and plans. A spy could be anyone. The young boy who held a British officer's horse might listen to his conversation and report it to the Sons of Liberty. Some spies memorized the information they gathered so there would be no proof if they got caught. Others hid notes in their shoes, in hollow buttons, and even in bullets. Sympathetic ink, a kind of invisible ink, was used by both sides. So were ciphers and book codes. So people, so people on both sides would tr sneak information 
so that their side could become more powerful and know what the enemy was thinking. Ciphers were easy to write. You just substituted a different letter for each letter of the alphabet. For example, if you sent your friend a message saying T-R-G-L-P-G-B, he would be able to read it as long as he knew the cipher you were using. T stands for A, R stands for S, G stands for E, L stands for C, P stands for R, G stands for E, again, B stands for T. T, R, G, L, P, G, B would mean a secret. Benedict Arnold was a general in the American Army, but he wasn't satisfied. He wanted more pay and a higher rank. He offered to betray his country. He would weaken West Point, a fort under his command, so that the British would be able to capture it. When Americans learned of his treachery, they were shocked. A Benedict Arnold became another term for a traitor. Do you think you would be willing to become a spy to help the Americans or to help the British? It wasn't unusual to use a cipher in colonial times. Many people, including Thomas Jefferson, wrote their private letters in cipher. Benjamin Franklin didn't. He said he could never remember the key. A book code was different from a cipher. The spy and the person to whom he was writing had copies of the same book, usually a dictionary. Numbers were used, and each group of numbers stood for a word. They told where in the book that word could be found. The first number told the page, the second the line, and the third which word on the line. The spy could compose the coded message by using his copy of the book, and the other person would figure it out by using his copy. The adventures of many successful spies will always remain secrets, but some famous spies of the Revolutionary War, like Nathan Hale, are still honored for their courage and loyalty. Others, like Benedict Arnold, who betrayed his country, are remembered with scorn. Nathan Hale was a loyal American. He disguised himself as a schoolmaster, slipped through British lines, and collected a greer deal of information. But before he could return, he was arrested and sentenced to be hanged without even a trial. Before the hangman knotted the noose around his neck, Nathan Hale said, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. Ann Bates was a Philadelphia school teacher who became a British spy. She disguised herself as a peddler, carrying a stock of needles, thread, combs, knives, and medicine. Today we've learned that both sides were being really sneaky in trying to win the American Revolutionary War. All the colonists and all the different colonies are coming together to become more powerful to try and defeat the British Army. Come back tomorrow for our next two chapters. Bye!